What does that have to do <laughs> with you? You don't have to drink. Right. Go to the reception for like 30 minutes and then she'll be dancing her ass off. She won't know. Just like you're her family and her mom's not going religions first over your family. And like, I guess, uh, it's like, don't, don't <laughs> kill me. <laughs> And, and welcome, welcome back, back to Give It To Me Straight. Straight. I'm Alex. And I am John. And we're your, your gracious, 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 gracious host. Wow, how A do you lot feel? Of energy. You look like you're about to start crying. Are you close to it? <laughs> I'm like always on the edge of crying these days. I watched One Day. If That's... you haven't seen it on Netflix, I don't want to give any spoilers, but. I actually have a little video of you from last night crying when we were going to bed. And I was like, explain the movie to me. <laughs> You have a and video you were so you were so mad because you're like I'm I, not explaining it to you. I feel like that should be illegal to film me number one without knowing. But number two, I didn't do anything with the it. The issue that I have with you is because I'm upset. I finished this show and it just like struck a chord with me. So I'm crying, and John's like, it wasn't a oh little cry god. either. It he was, was like, like, oh my god, like so was that little girl like their kid? He's asking all these questions, and I'm like. He's like, did someone die? I'm like, yeah, she died. And he's like, don't spoil it. I said spoilers ahead. Oh, so sorry <laughs> if someone dies. Um, and then he just asked more questions. And then I had a moment of clarity where I was like, this motherfucker, if you want the answers to the show, you could watch it with me. I'm not going to give you the synopsis. It's not my kind of show. Just I know, cliff note the show then, for me. No, like Why? I'm not. Because you don't deserve to know the cliff notes of the show. Like, if you wanted to invest time and energy, you would understand. There's too much out there to watch. Like, I, right when we get done with this podcast, besides going to Apple, then after that, I'm going to treat myself and I'm going to watch Roadhouse with Conor McGregor and Jake Gyllenhaal. Did we ever finish Ricky Stenicki? No, we still got to finish that yeah. too. And we got to finish the last season of Breaking Bad. We're almost done. We got to check, check, the, check them off. I know there is so much content out there to watch. It's like, sometimes it's just good to go back Flooded. and watch what you're comfortable with, what you know is going to be good. I hate investing into something that's not good. I'm so excited for Roadhouse. I know it's like not going to be the best acting, but I don't care because Conor McGregor is a beast. Jake Gyllenhaal is the man. And just like, that'd be a movie I want to be in. It's just like constant someone, bar fights. Someone wrote into the podcast and said, has anyone ever said that John looks like Jake Gyllenhaal? Excuse me, what? <laughs> yeah, someone wrote in and said <laughs> me? that. It's your, like, you have a similar profiles. I can see That is, see like, it. the nicest compliment ever. I'll take that. A little bit. I could see it. Like, you could be related. Kobe, what do you need? What do you need? <laughs> He's doing the most. He needs everything. Oh, my God. He still smells like a skunk. He and does. just his face. It's when he goes out into the rain, and today it's raining, and then he comes back in smelling like skunk. But you know LA is going to have beautiful weather. As soon when as we, we leave. leave. We just bring it with us. Like, I'm telling you, we just brought the bad weather with us. I mean, I just, we can't win. Can't win with it. But whatever. I mean, there's been more nice days here than, than rainy days. I don't, I guess. It's And it's still nicer here than it has been on the East Coast. Right. Like, it's monsooning in New York. So, we'll get to New York right for that perfect, <laughs> perfect weather. I just hope that Kobe, Kobe doesn't smell like a skunk on the plane because we're actually flying with him. That Fingers is crossed. going to be interesting. Kobe freaks out in the car. So I can't imagine what the plane's going to be like. He'll be fine. He's a trained service animal. He is trained. He's a trained service animal. To help Alex and with her mental, mental health. health. Yeah. And no one's allowed to legally ask me what, what my her mental issues are. Issues are. Because I spoke with a doctor on the phone and he said, it's I have It's all legal, problems. baby. <laughs> exactly. Legal. So Kobe will be my assistant service animal, and I will just be... You guys will be <laughs> assisting each other, because if there's any sort of turbulence, he is going to lose his fucking mind. I think as long as I just get him some like noise-canceling headphones, he'll be fine. He's he'll be fine. One final ride I'm for Kobe. I'm more concerned. Know? I know. We literally... We thought That's he, it. We thought he was going to die on he, the West Coast. He's going to the East Coast and he's fucking staying on the East yeah. Coast. That's it. He's no not more. coming back. He's not coming back. <laughs> Unless we could get on one of those like canine jet flights or something. <laughs> you know, sometimes when I feel like, are we bad dog parents? We're the best. This guy has done everything. He's he's traveled everywhere. I just, I rescued him from the streets. Like he wouldn't be alive Wasn't right he now. under a car yeah. or something? Yeah. He you're fucking lucky. Beat up, under a car, covered in fleas. 
And now he just, he gets to sleep on the couch. He's spoiled. He gets little snacks, the cheese tax. <laughs> <laughs> I love that video. My buddy Chris and I, we uh, we send that back and forth. He's like, the cheese tax, the cheese tax. Everybody know that. You and Kobe are both, I don't want to say benefiting, but uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? About what? what? Like, because I'm consuming extra so calories. I'm consuming more. I'm not benefiting. That's a, <laughs> no, that's, what I'm that's a fucking hazard. Yeah. So, Co I'm collateral damage. <laughs> that's not, what I am. I don't, yeah. But benefiting is not the right word. I can't think of the word that I'm looking for. Collateral damage. No, it's not good for me. But you're Kobe, eating, but Kobe's getting the extra snacks too. Cause every time I'm making an extra snack for me and babes, he's like, what about me? <laughs> He is gaining weight. I, we're all, you know, we're all gaining weight, but it's good for you that you're gaining weight, not for <laughs> Kobe and I. I had to not wear a sweater today because I was on fire last episode. I was like, I need to just like cool down. Just breathe those puppies so, out. So hot. <laughs> I'm just so hot all the time now. But I'm so excited though that we shared the news. Thank you guys for all of your love. We're excited to just like share updates along the way. I think it's good too because like when we first found out, like Alex didn't really have an outlet to like talk to anyone, yeah. you know? And we were like, well, and we're also still like fairly early on in the stage. We're like, do we want to like announce anything yet or tell anyone until we know a little more, but like not being able to talk to anyone. You're talking to me. I'm like, I don't fucking know. Well, I know nothing. What is crazy though, is how quickly it goes. Like already being in the second trimester of things. I'm just Wild. like, it's going to be here before we know it. So this past weekend we visited our, one of our best friends who just had a baby and it is just wild. Like I remember taking the pregnancy test with her to confirm like on a digital test. And now she's here. It's just it's crazy. It's crazy how quickly it goes and how little she is. She's so cute, but you just do it. They're so fragile. Little. Well, I, think, I guess they're not, but like to yeah. me, they are, I'm like, I'm just like, don't want to drop. You just have to keep the them alive. I know. Oh my gosh. I feel like last episode there was just, I was just overwhelmed with too much information, which I think will be fun throughout the rest of the season to just talk about, you know, the new things that we're going to be But I don't want to make this whole thing about babies. No, no, no. That's, not at all. Well, and that's the thing too. We're individuals also, outside of being parents. Yeah, I don't want that to be our whole like identity is like having a kid. Nar. 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 So, Absolutely nart. <laughs> yeah. But so what we're... What's going on is we're basically, we have to do a couple episodes because we have a lot going on in the next few weeks. We're moving across the country and then we're traveling out of the country and then we have to wait for all of our gear to arrive. So if you guys don't hear specific updates from us, it's because we pre-recorded just like a handful of episodes. You will know when they're new, when we're in our house. Because it won't be this beautiful white backdrop. You know what? It, probably it might be another be white, white backdrop. backdrop. We'll saw these trees. People probably actually won't be able to tell, but we'll let you know. We'll be like, we're in our house in New York <laughs> And maybe it will be like a different hue of white. We need to do something. We have that A and J sign. We should put that we up do. again. We do. We have to hang it. That's the thing about constantly moving, which I'm excited to just hunker down and stay yeah, there. Yeah, but your deck. And now we'll have someone help us. I know. I'm like, now though, I'm like, do we want wallpaper? No, my point was- Shiplap. This wasn't changed. Shiplap is so out, John. <laughs> shiplap. You want to do the garage with the little wood beams. That's, That's shiplap. shiplap. No, it's not. It's like the wooden slats. Oh, because it's vertical and not horizontal? That, no, they're called different things. What it's is that? It's not shiplap. I don't know. Little wood yeah, bars. Yeah, it's not shiplap. Okay, whatever. Anyways, so yeah, that will be... The movers are... You ever have this... Like, movers are great. I just like wish the window of when they're dropping stuff off was a little better. They're like, we have 15 days. And you don't know when we're going to arrive. It could be anywhere from... 10 to 30 days and you just don't know so we're we're packing. still trying to close on the house i don't have an actual closing date i'm trying to think what did we do the last time we moved across the country did we stay at your parents before we we did because i was like they're taking our bed yeah, we had Where that video we, we had that video on youtube when we right. left at like four in the morning right i know but i just remember that in this moment before that i was trying to remember if we slept on the floor an air mattress because i couldn't remember what we did because they're taking our bed, so we're just going to have to keep an air mattress, I guess. And then, yeah. I don't know, and then give it away. Give I it guess. to our friends, because yeah, we're not some... taking it on a plane with us. Yeah. No, so, many, so many of those little things where we're like, huh. This is the last ride. That's it. Mark my words. This is it. I hope so. I hope I'm so. so done. I am so done with moving. <laughs> but... Again, we do it to ourselves. 
What other updates? Do we have anything else? I had a note to talk about sponges, but that doesn't seem like something. Oh, why? You know why? It's because I was cleaning the dishes the other day with our sponges. I've and cleaned I was like, the floor with we it. We use these sponges for everything. And I'm like, our dishes are not getting cleaner. If anything, they're getting dirtier. But you brought up, it's helping our immune system. That's right. Because we're probably eating bleach. <laughs> It's just killing everything and also giving us all the. Oh, right, look! I clean the dish with the with the sponge, and then I clean again with like soap with my hand, like dish soap. So I clean it. So that's it's clean, you know. No, but I think we're just those sponges got to go. We're just spreading germs. Sponges are disgusting. Yeah, yeah. So whatever. We're building our immune systems. I've done the most disgusting things. I've eaten sandwiches off the floor of Penn Station before. If you've ever played yeah, beer that's pong. Disgusting. Gross. I used to we used to play beer pong. I think we I said this, and I remember there was a hole in our fraternity house like floor, and if the ball went in there, you'd have to go around the corner and flush the toilet, and it would shoot the ball out the hole. And I don't know why. Did you play with water cups or beer cups? Beer cups. Yeah. You just pull the hair and shit off it. And these we had like frat bangers, you know, big parties. So everyone's stepping. Wow. I know. Like, I remember my shoes in college getting stuck to the floors oh. in frat houses. There were some fraternity houses that, like, their their toilets never worked for all four years. So they would just what? Well, because no one at our school, no one wanted to lose their house because it was, like, prime location. Because the minute you, like, the landlords weren't obligated to go in to fix anything until a new tenant came in. So, like, they wouldn't, they had a toilet that literally did not work for four years that is unsafe. Oh, there's like shit piled up. And I, I'm pretty sure in the house, then it burnt down. Someone burnt it down. Arson. They're like, if we can't have it, no one can. Oh, I was like, someone just got sick of the shit and burnt it down. No, they were losing the house. It was The house was getting condemned. Ugh. Anyways. So, yeah. So, anyways, we'll, uh, we'll let you know updates when we can. <laughs> when we can. Exactly. Once we get our mics and our cameras and our lights and our gear back. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, you're stuck with us here in L.A. Should we go into questions? Yeah. Let's do it. My husband was previously married and has two children with his ex. His ex is constantly lying about having medical conditions like cancer for sympathy. She posted a cancer survivor photo shoot with the kids, even though she is not a cancer survivor. She's also spending time with a man who actually lost his wife to cancer several years ago. Do we let this run its course or do we out her to all the people she uses and lies to? There's so much more to it. And we are just so tired of the horrible lies, especially when the kids get involved. All right. I was about to say, what's the main thing is what, how involved are the kids? What? Cause they're just in the photo shoot. Do you think she's like brainwashing the kids? Cause besides that part, Everything else, I'd be like, this is so relevant. Like, how is it affecting you? Right. But I think it's one of those things that I would tell my kids and be like, you know how Santa, Santa is real. <laughs> That's like your mom's cancer. <laughs> like, you just have to make You're it seem. You're just setting the stage for them to like never trust their mother ever again. I mean, if you want to, because what's annoying is she's bringing the kids in as part of her lie but it's not like she's doing what's that what oh, we just talked about this i feel what is what? that syndrome Mun just munchausen by proxy where the parent makes it seem like the kid is sick so that they could get all the benefits from like make a wish it's not like they're she's doing that with your kid because if she was doing that yet. obviously <laughs> it should yet be, right yet but yeah i don't know i would just also is your relationship already kind of like teetering on edge because does she have custody of the kids? How much of a battle do you want to, to get into? Because, right, because what might happen? She might take... It's also on your husband to have that conversation with his ex and be like, quit being a crazy person. Or or you just let her... The people, truth will come out. People love attention. The as, truth will come as out. As we're doing a podcast and we're on social media, like <laughs> pot calling the kettle black, but people love attention. In different ways. You know what, John? We do it for art. It's called hashtag entertainment. No, I'm not an artist. Okay, well, you're taking away from what I you're like the, to you're do. You're the artist. <laughs> I'm a realist. Okay, next question. Did we answer that? You did. I mean, mine was like, I tread lightly on that. It's like, because you don't know how far she'll take. She already sounds crazy, so you don't know what she might do if you start 
you know, questioning her health condition, probing her for, yeah. Yeah. I think just let her, what, and what are you going to do? Just Stop like putting the, the kids in your photos. Just like the STD. Show me your paperwork. What are you going to do? I don't know. Yeah. I would like to know. She's like, there's so much more, but like the main thing is the kid part. So like you should have given us more details on like, what exactly is she having the kids do besides take photos with her? <laughs> and I guess you wouldn't technically be lying if you were like, your mom's ill right. in the head. <laughs> also, I mean, it's not, is she like a cancer? Is she pretending like she's a cancer survivor shaving her head and like making yeah. the kids shave their heads too? No. You it, know, like, well, I don't know. That's very specific, but no, she did post a cancer survivor photo. Either way. I just think the truth will come out. You saying something I don't think is really going to make a difference. And especially to the people who are in her life, because she's going to fight against that try to prove her point. Right. I think you just let it ride. I guess, yeah. Unless she really is putting your kids in some sort of danger. Next question. I live with my best friend and her boyfriend. We've been living together for years, and just recently I've started to become attracted to her boyfriend. I don't know if I'm feeling lonely or if I really do like him, but I've never thought this before. He's always there for me and treats me like a second girlfriend in some ways, like making me dinner, gabbing about my feelings, etc. And now I catch myself wondering, what if? Of course, I would never try anything because I love my best friend, but I can't seem to shake this attraction. What should I do? You are in dangerous waters. I could see it though. I think that can happen to anyone. If you're around the same person constantly. Him doing friendly tasks is not him treating you like a second girlfriend. Maybe that's the best she's ever been treated. You know? Maybe she hasn't had a relationship with someone who actually treats her like she should be treated. But then there, there lies the problem that you think that someone doing the bare minimum of just like human interaction interaction is him treating you like a second girlfriend. He's not treating you like dinner. a second girlfriend. He's yeah, but probably because him and his girlfriend are making dinner. You got to take a step back and be like, a hundred percent pump the brakes. Think like he's not, he's being courteous to you. Think, I think exactly. Uh, you, you don't know. Maybe he likes attention too. It's something new. Think about like, if roles were reversed though, and you had a boyfriend and your best friend started developing these feelings. What would you feel as a friend? You'd be like, what the fuck bitch? I can tell you what not to do. Uh, don't fucking act on anything. Don't say anything because this is, seems like it's all what you're feeling. Right. Check yourself. Check yourself. Unless you want to ruin that. What should you do? Absolutely fucking absolutely nothing. <laughs> like, that's the question. <laughs> Move out. <laughs> Move out. Yeah, I would try to distance yourself. Like, what? And, and truly get to the core of it. And be like, why am I? Go on more dates. Am I, go on more dates. Are you feeling lonely? Probably. Yeah, so I would uh, take a proactive approach of distancing, your, distancing yourself, going on more dates with other people, getting out of the house. If you value your friendship, do those things. Or if you don't, fucking home wreck and see what happens. Yeah. Sure, why not? Yeah, just ruin your life. <laughs> yeah. Next question. I know you both met on Tinder. Hey, uh, and I wanted to ask if you had any advice on dating on the apps. I've been on Tinder slash Hinge, Bumble for years, and it's not working. I definitely get a lot of attention, but I never meet someone who is on my level of quality. Do I need to start filtering out more people? How do I make myself pop on an app? What was it about Alex that made her stand out on the apps, John? What was it, Why John? is the only picture I remember is of you and Kobe? You were squatting down, petting Kobe or something, and you had like blue Nike shoes on. He was a little puppy then. Um, yeah, I mean, it you was answered so this long question. ago. Oh my God. I don't remember. I don't even know what apps are like. Now is it the same thing? You guys swipe chat a little bit and then meet up. Isn't that crazy that that, that was like eight years ago at this point? I've seen the hinge app and it's too creative for me. Like I am not a witty creative person. I don't even think you had anything written in your bio other than like John. I love pizza. I'm not going to write something corny. Cause like I not that funny, you know? And like now hinge, you got to like ask questions and have like a funny response back. Oh my God, I'd fail. I think ultimately what I took away from the apps was texting, messaging is truly meaningless until you meet that person in person. You did not translate from the app to who you were in person. I was like, oh, this guy's going to just be like weird and think he's so cool. And <laughs> okay. 
then you were weird still. Why? How did you think I was... How did you get that impression that I thought I was too cool? That's like what your pictures gave off. You you gave off very like I macho vibes. I had a pizza. I had a fucking pizza. I know, but you didn't... I didn't have my shirt off and anything. You kind. You don't even remember my photos. Yeah, I do. You're calling... You you're just saying... You had one at a piano. You had one with your sister and your grandma. But like, you're just... Your look, you looked like... Sorry that I was... Oh, you know, a little overweight. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. Wow, you're really talking about my appearances right now. No, John, huh. like you're so <laughs> handsome. I'm with you. Like, <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> but all I'm saying is what you presented as on the app was not who you were in person. And like, you were very dry. You were like, hey, want to go out? Like, no creativity. Dude, I was and then when you were in person, I was like, oh my gosh, she's so funny. Isn't it so tiring though? Like, oh, the building the rapport, like instead of the hours of texting and messages back and forth, just meet the person. Yeah. I in mean, a public place <laughs> you, where you drive separately and you have a coffee or a drink that you buy yourself. But how do you even get to that point? Like how would one- like filtering the, the people swipe out? Swipe right on you. Like how do you even get to that point of swiping right? Well, we saw our your friend, our friends, like when she mm -hmm. put it on the TV, swiping the guys and like, do some of these guys, like if I can help you, you look like tool bags. The one guy, the one guy that was like, eh, like, you know, you, you know, the guy, he got his fresh cut and he's like walking through a house. He's like, mm, hey, what's up? And like, you know that video he did? Well, because now you could do voice notes and videos. Stop it. I truly believe, and this is going to sound so, so cliche, be yourself. <laughs> be truly yourself. I feel like you're, you're. On the app. Like if you're, if you're that douchey dude. You're contradicting dude, my. I was myself. I had photos with my grandmother. No, I know. And but my like, sister. It, that was enough for me to still be like, I want to meet this person, you know? So like we did end up meeting because you were All right, that let's, person. Yeah, let's go back to her. I feel like we're talking about ourselves. So I wasn't. You keep bringing about yourself. You're like, <laughs> you're, you're being mean to me, Alex. I'm like, I wasn't talking about you just in this moment. <laughs> so how does she get to that point? You're going to have to filter out. Well, you have your preferences, you know? She's asking how does she make herself pop? She says she's getting a ton of attention. So what else does she have to do to make herself pop? You want more attention? She, no, that's not what she's asking. She's asking like... That was a question. She's basically saying like she's meeting a lot of people, but they're not the quality that she wants. So she wants to figure out like how to filter these people out. Okay. If you really want quality, people who pay, pay to play. So Tinder, Hinge, Bumble, I don't know that that... that there's the highest quality. I'm calling, you can find that, but it's dime a dozen. I'm calling bullshit on that too because we know people that are on um, what's like the match? No, the the celebrity one. We what's Raya that one? is is full of twat waffles too. So uh, that's what I'm saying. You well, you don't have to pay to play for that. I guess you just that's have to like be, a that's like a popularity contest on Raya. Like you just have to be hot, know someone, make money. I have guess match because you're putting your money where your mouth followers. is. And you're folk. You're like there with a purpose and intention not everyone that's but, my point yeah. is saying you are intentionally filling out those dating websites i don't know i just think that if you truly want someone of quality go to the places where people are actually looking for marriage material per people or someone who's looking for a, a long-term relationship not someone who's just looking for a hookup or dating around it worked for us but we also i wasn't i wasn't seriously dating around i don't think you were really either at that point I almost was just like, it almost felt like a job. I was just like, whatever. I was single. I'm like, just going through it, going yeah. through the motions. It got so tiring going on dates. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Anyways. It is tiring. So basically our advice is pay to play. Be yourself. Like put your honest, truest self on that form. I also like, if you're trying to weed them out... I know like honestly, honesty is the best policy, but is that too abrasive? Like you need to be, you have your like set criteria to like filter them out. Like your FICO score needs to be this. You need to be this tall. You need to look like this. You need to, you know, have this type of personality. I don't know. Like, is that too much to do that? That might be a lot from the start, but who cares? Maybe, maybe it would filter out the shitholes there. Right. Good luck. Did we answer that? I think so. Sure. Next question. Well, honestly, the best way to meet someone is, I would say, through friends or family. It's all naturally. It's I feel all like naturally is days. like the best way to meet someone. Yeah, I mean, when you're not looking, is 
normally when it happens and when you're so, confident in yourself. So cliche to say, but it's true. It's true. Yeah. I mean, that's not how we met, but <laughs> but it really is like when you're just confident in yourself and you're just doing your own thing, do that. People notice that. And that's right. what ha- and that's when it happens. Yeah. I really feel like it is leaning into what makes you you, like what makes you unique, because that's what other people are going to connect on as well. Like, why do you connect with people? on specific things. It's because you can relate to them. If you both share a hobby, share something in common. So I just feel like really leaning into like the little things that make you who you are. And that's how you're going to filter out all those, all those people who aren't right for you. Bye. Next question. I'm going to visit my college best friend in a couple of weeks. We have the best relationship when it's just the two of us. She likes to bring her boyfriend around, but as much as he makes her happy, his presence doesn't make me happy. He changes the vibe and the energy with the three of us, and it's so boring. He's not a bad guy. He just isn't as fun as me and my bestie. It always puts a damper on my visits. How do I tell her that I really just want to hang out with her and not her boyfriend? I'm oh, sorry. Are they, they go on vacation together or she goes to just She's visit her friend? She's going to visit her friend. And her boyfriend lives with her? She didn't say lives with her, but like she said her bestie brings her boyfriend around. Okay. I get that. I If he doesn't live with her, you know, and it, I get like you're going to see your friend. So like you want to spend time with her. Because I, I would think differently if they live together and like that's her life now. Mm-hmm. You know, Right now, if they're just like dating, like, dude, she should give some some time to just hang out with you. If you know this, though, why don't you plan a trip somewhere else with your best friend? Like, why don't you do a girl's trip somewhere in between you guys? Why do you have to go visit her? True. You know, like if you already know this, you said that this has been several times that you've gone and he's boring. Yeah, mix it up. Maybe. Yeah. You, yeah. I don't think. Why do you have to go see her every time? You know, I would say prepare for the future, though. Right. Because if they get married, he's going to be around. So be a big part of her life. She should bring that up. Like, is there a way to communicate? Let's do a girl's night. Like, let's have a girl's time. I don't think this is. Yeah, I I think she's fine doing that. It's justified right now. Because you're like, I'm going all the way to see you. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's cool. Set the scene. It's cool hanging out with like you and Peter. But like. Honestly, I just want to hang out with you. Also, there's some conversations that you can only have with your girls that you don't, you know, like when you're catching up with your girlfriends, it's sure. different when a husband or a boyfriend yeah, is Yeah, you're going to have to like tone it down a little bit. So maybe make it about you and just be like, hey, like I just want to have, I have some things I want to chat with you about. Like, let's do a girl's dinner one night. That way, you know, you do have some quality one-on-one time with her. Is she in a different state? Maybe, I guess. Like, John, I read the question and I'm giving you all the information that I have. I don't, I'm not gatekeeping anything from you. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you think I am? No. I noticed that in the last episode, I'm listening and you're like asking me all these specifics as if I have an encyclopedia of extra information. I mean, there's a lot of variables that we need to know. You know, if you're out of state going to visit and you got to stay with her or it's so like, or is it like a date night? Are you me or are you asking in general? I don't know. Sometimes you, <laughs> sometimes the writer. Okay. <laughs> Writer, call in right now. Call in. <laughs> Even though we're not live. <laughs> no. Best of luck. I think the next time, though, go to a mutual place together that is not with her at her place or yours. Meet somewhere So in basically, the you're kind of like, don't say anything to her about it. Just be more creative in the way you hang out. Yeah. Okay. I mean, again, it's she's obviously with her boyfriend. She loves him. But. Yeah, but I get that. I'd be like, just. <laughs> I would not. Honestly, I'd be like, oh my God, can we just hang out the two of us? That's a better way. You, what you're saying is a better way, but I couldn't hold it. Like, I know. Oh my God, your boyfriend's so goddamn annoying. Because there <laughs> is, there are those people who don't kind of read the room where when your friend does come to town, you, unless they're also coming with a partner, it is kind of just like, let's, you know, you could tag along sometimes, <clears throat> but the majority of the time you do want one-on-one time with your best. I mean, I've actually heard of people like having a girl's trip and be like, oh, my boyfriend's coming or my husband's coming. Like, th- that actually happens. Like people are kind of fucking clueless and don't know how to read the room with like that or overstaying. <laughs> or, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot. Overstaying is a different topic than always bringing your partner around. Still though. But do what you're comfortable with talking to her and you'll have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I've started dating again after getting out of a 15 year marriage. I date with intention and have a lot of deep conversations revolving around relationships, marriage, and finances. 
one topic that came up was whether I would have an issue with her having a male friend. She mentioned she has one or two male friends that she has been friends with since high school and would sometimes have lunch or dinner together alone or go do things together if they were both available. She seems to think that that is fine, even if she was married and said it was platonic. She is loyal and would never let anything happen. This is something neither partner would ever think of doing in my previous marriage. I'm okay with my spouse having a male friend, but I believe that when you are married, that changes and it is all about respect for the other partner and there should be boundaries. Am I out of line or too traditional? Ooh, this is going to be, this is going to divide people. I think earlier in my life, I'd be like, play cool. Like, yeah, I don't care. I'm confident, whatever. Being married, I'm like, the fuck you are. There's a difference though between having a friend mm. uh, of the opposite sex and then having one-on-one -on -one time with that friend of the opposite sex because you have friends of the opposite sex. But, She's if, you, bringing, go ahead. but if you were spending intentional one-on-one -on -one time with those friends without me, I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah, no. And I say this now only from watching this show one day about these friends oh, cheated? who met and... This guy, so he's, he cheated on he's someone? getting married and they're like, <laughs> I'm going to get Alex to tell me this whole show before the end of, the, before the end so of this episode. They're talking so what happened? the whole time how they're just friends. It's a platonic relationship. But then he's fucking engaged, has a baby on the way and she know? they're making out. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and there was a tension the whole time. And I'm not saying that this is every relationship of the opposite sex who are friends, but I just do think that if you think that you're truly friends with someone of the opposite sex and you have no feelings for them, then they probably have feelings for you. Like someone deep down, someone would fuck. Someone would fuck if they were given the chance. Yeah. I just think it's a respect thing too. Like I, I don't think I would appreciate it, so I wouldn't want to do it to you. But like my girlfriends that I have, like they want to spend time with you and they respect that too. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, even though we used to hang out one-on-one -on -one and, and we were just close friends, they're like, let's all do something together. Right. And I just think that's just, I think that's the way to do it. You know that this has been an issue in this girl's past with previous relationships because the fact that she's bringing it up, like it's going to happen. Oh, like, would you care mm -hmm. if I had dinner with my male friend? Right. I mean, also it does depend. Like I hang out one-on-one -on -one with my gay friends, but I just think it's, it's different there because I'm, there's, I, there's I mean, it, like, no attraction. We're truly just we're, friends. We're not, we're not, you don't have to skirt the, yeah, that's true. Like I'm not threatened by that. You right. Know, I, I, whatever. Uh, I mean, I think to each their own. It's also own, our though, employees. So what is, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> he was my bestie first, but I think it's, are you out of line or too traditional? That's the question. I think to each their own, what are you comfortable with in your relationship? What is your partner comfortable with? And if that's a non-negotiable for her, that's what is not a non-negotiable for her. And that doesn't line up with you guys. I'm so lear like learning about myself the older I get. I'm literally like, uh, the fuck you are. First off, I don't know the person. It's not like this has been, I know I would know nothing about this person that right. you're gonna be going to dinner. I don't, I don't fucking think so. I just, again, there's no situation in which I would feel comfortable with you having one-on-one -on -one time with someone from the opposite sex where I'm not included. Like, I don't know, maybe if I was out of town and you grabbed coffee with them, but I'd still be like, why is now the time that you want to get coffee with this person? Right. You just bring an unnecessary tension. But I don't, what are, you, what are your thoughts though about the having friends of the opposite sex. I think I'm fine with that. It's about, of course we have that. We'd be very hypocritical if we right. weren't fine with that, but it's still, you're not really one-on-one -on -one spending time with them. It's kind of like group settings. I mean, if you got to go like pick something up or whatever, you know, it's not like I'm setting time aside to spend with this person. Cause I'd be like, if you're going out to dinner with anyone, I want to fucking go right. Like in this show, <laughs> The girl and the guy who are friends, they go on vacation to Greece together when he has a girlfriend. I'm like, I would never, <laughs> never. You've lost your mind. Yeah. Imagine. I'm like, oh my God. You'll be John, going to Greece. John is just going You'll to Greece. You'll be going to Greece single. <laughs> I just, and again, if that works in your relationship, I would love she to know how. was pregnant or already had the kid when he went to Greece. Either way. John, no. 
No. I'm just you saying. Have to watch the show. He That's was not- like, I think it's cool. Yeah, I'll just go to Greece. You're just, you know, you take care of the kid. No, he wasn't married at that point. He was engaged. And he didn't have, no, I just told you he had a girlfriend in the show. Oh. I just said he was dating someone when he went to Greece with his friend. But again, the whole time they really had this underlying. It was just like the timing Sexual wasn't right. Tension. Exactly. It was like if we could just both align. And then it was like one wasn't ready. And they were like, no, we're just friends. It, I'm telling you, I just feel and then like a different it's time. A the other person slope. was like, and they were like, no. So there's it was, these separate times of the sexual tension. Right. Wow. Yeah, John, you got it. It's like I, you watched it. It's almost like I watched it. <laughs> well, best of luck. I think you have every right to feel the way that you feel because that's a boundary for you specifically. And if you can't align, then maybe you just aren't aligned as a couple. Next question. Hey, guys. John, I too am dyslexic, so I know your struggle. My issue is with my husband's father. He's a decent guy and a good family man for the most part, but he's a bigot. Is that how you say that word? I don't know how to say it. B-I-G-O-T. Yeah. Bigot. 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 Bigot, yeah. Whatever. There is really no way to put it lightly. He's one of those men will be men, people who are rude to women he works with. He's had so many complaints about him from women to HR at his job that he had to take a leadership class. He comments on how these women were too soft and how he didn't even do anything wrong, even going so far as calling one of them a Californian snowflake bitch after she reported him for bullying her in front of the owners of the company at a meeting that they had. He has a daughter and a granddaughter, and he hardly talks to either of them. He makes little effort to talk to me, and when he does, it's ever so slightly talking down at me about something. It is important to note that my husband is not oblivious to this, and it annoys him, but he does little to stand up for himself. All this to say it really pisses me off. When my father-in-law goes on one of his tangents, I don't say anything because it's not worth the argument, and I'm also kind of new to the family, so I'm not totally comfortable, even though I know I should stand up for myself and others. I want to give my husband the confidence to stand up to his father without making him feel like he has to yell at his dad. My husband is so eager to make his parents proud. It's been his mission his whole life. How can I help him speak his mind, which I know he wants to do with confidence? The fact that she's thinking about her husband right now is like so thoughtful. Like this guy needs to step it up and think about his fiance. They're not married yet, right? They're married. Husband. Husband. You need to stick up for your wife. Your wife is your family now. You have your parents, but she's not an addition to your family. You have your own family. I heard some guy talking about that on a podcast, (laughs) which just makes sense. Like it's true. This is your little posse now i mean when you say i do you're each other's most important people parents they could come second now and and then if you have kids again but like when you're married your, your parents opinions on things especially outside of your marriage should be taken i don't want to say with a grain of salt but like your partner is number one i'm not gonna lie like i both sides of our family like our parents they know like we got each other's back. I just like, I don't get any lip from my parents. And mm-hmm. I don't think your parents say shit to you either. Cause they know we'll just lose our fucking well, minds I think on because them. Because we respect just, your parents and we respect yeah. our parents, but like we have a hard line. I think also because we're so vocal, they know to not say the things that will attack them on. <laughs> like, cause I think too, generations are just very different, especially if you have a conservative father-in-law you don't want to be the one to cross him. Your husband should be the one to 100%. make that stand. He needs to step it the fuck up. Right. He needs to step up. He wants to make his parents proud. Be like, make your wife what? proud. Make your right. wife feel comfortable around your family. Like, yeah. you are yes. not, you're not being a man in this situation. And I would say you're not being a, if it was roles reversed, I would say the same thing about a woman. Like, you're not being a real woman in this situation make me feel comfortable too. You, oh, if roles were reversed. Yeah, correct. I'm not just yeah. saying this like as a man thing, like a woman too, like you need to step up for your own, for you and your husband with your family. Mm-hmm. Being confident in yourself, speaking up for yourself, oh, man, it just, it it's, it's, does wonders. It's easier said than done though when sure. it's not with your own family. But again, that's why you have to have your con- a conversation with your husband and be like, do you respect me? Do you respect females if your dad is making these comments 
I don't feel comfortable. And maybe make that boundary and be like, I don't want to spend time with your family. The proof's in the pudding. Right. Look at him at work. At work, exactly. Fucking HR's all up his ass. His own family doesn't, the girls don't talk to him. Like, he's the problem. Right. Obviously. I just, I'm the type of person who wouldn't, who wouldn't tolerate that. So I wouldn't spend time with that person. Right. It's so easy for us because we are vocal and we know right. what we want and how we want people to treat us and how we treat people. A lot of people don't have that confidence in themselves and are scared to speak out. And you, you got to find a way to be confident. Life is too short to spend your time with people who don't respect you. hundred percent. Or with people who you don't even care to be around or feel confident. Like, so just also, we're not saying cut them out of your <laughs> yeah, life. Cause yeah, I feel yeah. like always people are like, we you, you tell people to break up, tell people to get divorced, tell people to like re remove people from their lives. But it's like, you just need to be confident in yourself and protect yourself. I wonder how his wife feels too. I would be mortified. Maybe she doesn't care. You know, like, does she have similar opinions? If, the mother-in-law, how she said in the beginning, like, this is kind of like the traditional, the bigot man thing. I'm sure she knows what she got into in the beginning. This she's been dealing with this for years, so she's probably just like. There is a world though into where, I don't know because again I have been in situations where I hear really unfortunate things said, and I'm like, is it my place? Do I really want to ruffle some feathers right now or? walk away. I usually run. Are you talking feathers. about like within family or just like outsiders? Just, because yeah. like, I'm not going to pick a battle for something that doesn't fucking matter to me. No, I think with family, I always ruffle the feathers. Of course. But, but with cause, cause you're, outsiders. you're stuck with those people. Right, you're yeah. like, that's different than like, if I hear some stranger say something stupid, I'm like, dude, yeah, like this doesn't affect me. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Anyways, best of luck. But I, I think, think that was really good advice. I think <laughs> your husband out of respect for you needs to step up in that. Yeah, for sure. Next question. This is more of a, will I be the asshole question? I'm very tempted to send a letter to my brother's new partner, warning her about what she's getting into. He is twice divorced and has several young children from his second marriage. The first marriage ended because they were mutually terrible for each other, but the second was all on him. With the arrival of each child, he became more and more withdrawn and more and more adverse adversarial about completing mutual chores around the home. At the same time, he wasn't working or actively pursuing work as he had prescribed to the bullshit idea that being your own boss is the only way to succeed. Even though he only wanted to be self-employed, he repeatedly turned down any work that did not align perfectly with his vision of what he wanted to do, which basically means he turned down everything. He made it seem like it was his then wife's job to pursue leads, market for him, but it was also her job to take care of the house and their children. After many missed bills, several times resulting in utilities being shut off and an attempt to isolate his wife from her family and friends, because we would call him out, she had enough and filed for divorce. I'm still close with her because she's an, an amazing human and mother who did her best with a narcissist. Everything is someone else's fault, and he is very quick to gaslight or turn the argument around to someone else if they call him out. Unfortunately, this recent divorce was not enough for him to learn a lesson. He is still not doing what he is supposed to in order to support his children. He owes several grand in child support and has started talking about moving states to be with his new partner, even though he has defaulted on payments to the point that the state has needed to garnish his wages. His new partner, a divorcee herself with children, seems completely unaware that he is skirting his parental responsibilities. Worse, he has been cutting his visitation with his own children short to see her going on dates and to events despite the huge amount of child support he still owes. Do I send her a note and tell her all of this or simply hope she's a listener to your show and connects the dots? Well, it seems like you already don't have a good relationship with your brother, so why not? <laughs> you say just, just I, I mean, let her know. The milk is spilled, you know? <laughs> I, well, I was going to say she's going to find out eventually. I feel like the if, when the writing is on the wall, even if he's a really great liar, it will come out. But if you have a decent relationship with if her. If they're just dating, maybe don't say anything. But if they're about to get married, oh, do that chick a favor. I mean, now I'm kind of like leaning towards what you said. It's like, if you don't have a good relationship with your brother, who like, cares? Because it's not really your place. Start the drama. If like, you know, do you want to like, you know, put tension between your relationship, but it seems like it's already there. Uh, why not? You're, you're helping someone out. He yeah. needs to grow the fuck up. So 
I don't know how he's going to do that. But at the same time, I'm like, if you're not self-aware enough to see the red flags in the person that you're dating, that's on you. Like, maybe you deserve to date that person. Oh, my God. You know, like, she's going to find out eventually. There's no way that he could keep all of these lies under wraps. But Come on, people are so fucking naive and blinded by the endorphins of first maybe dating Maybe they want to be naive and blind. And people like toxic relationships. I don't know. If you don't have a good relationship with your brother and you don't care. The TikTok I saw the other day of the girl that was like getting bored with a healthy relationship. I'm, I don't know what her text overlay was. It was something like when you realize you're so used to toxic relationships and then a healthy one comes along and you're bored because there's no drama. Right. Oh, I'm butchering it. But it makes so much sense. Like I'm following along. That's why. <laughs> that's why I watched. Love Do you know is what blind. it was? Do you, what was it? Do you, do you remember the line? No, no, no. I'm following along to like what you're saying. Like, because it does make sense. It's. I thought I showed you. And I think you just talked about it, and you said those exact words, and I was like, oh, oh that makes sense. Because again, people like the butterfly feeling, but it's really just anxiety. They're like, because it's hot and it's cold and it's high and it's low, and it's like the person who makes you feel comfortable is most likely the right person for you. And then it gives you that mental space to like focus on other cool shit and, Together, and stuff like that. Yeah. Build an empire. Or start whatever. Because you have confidence in your relationship <laughs> and you're not freaking out about like if you guys are good like good or not. Right. Exactly. But that was I, <laughs> I really want an update on this one, what you end up doing. Are you gonna tell her? Because the odds are, if she's a listener, even if she is a listener, which like probably not, who knows. We've had a lot of questions like this, by the way, where it's like, do, do I, I tell, tell my sibling or not? Because there was another one about like a girl and her sister. And family's different, you know. Like if your sister in law was doing something to your brother, like tell your fucking family. I mean, you always want to give everyone the opportunity to be upfront and honest on their own first. Like here's the floor. You should do what's right. Before I fucking do it for you. Right. But give Good us luck. an update. Next question. I live in a small condo building and had made small talk with a very handsome neighbor a handful of times in the lobby. This led him to taking me to coffee a few months ago. We had a nice time together. And when the invite progressed to dinner, I let him know it was probably best we just get to know each other as friends first since neither of us is moving anytime soon. So it's a higher risk situation. He was totally on board and we've ended up hanging out platonically many times. He's a good guy and I'm attracted to him, though I have some reservations about differing career goals and the 10 year age gap between us. We're old enough where it's appropriate but I feel comfortable with him and we mostly want similar things in life. So if he wasn't my neighbor, I'd probably say YOLO and see where it went. It feels like I should only take the risk of an uncomfortable living situation if I truly believe he could be the one and I'm ready to settle down. Am I putting too much pressure on this situation or is it wise to not get involved with neighbors? I've dated people in the past in apartment buildings, but someone was always moving in a couple months so it never made for an uncomfortable situation later. When's your lease up? <laughs> I think it's When's a condo. When's your lease up? That's it, I don't think there's a, that's what she's saying. I think she probably owns it. It's a condo. I dated somebody in my building. I was going to say, you don't you want to shit where you eat. So you, that's your answer. Don't shit where you eat. If you want awkward interactions, good news for me though, I was the one who ended it because if it was the other way around, Aww, that would hurt. Your heart, that, your heart would hurt. Yeah, I would hate to see that person all the time. Since it was me, it didn't bother me. How, but how often did you actually run into this person in the building? At the pool. Oh. Well, so, and maybe just think of that, that situation. Like, you live in a small condo building. How often do you act, would you actually run into this person? I'm literally picturing, like, they're the door across the hall from you. <laughs> Neighbors. If that's the case, I do, don't do it. I don't know. There's something kind of romantic about this. I mean, it seems like... Everything's pointing to yes, like good dude. And he hasn't tried like, you know, pushing you into anything. Right. So. Well, she's saying though, like, okay, it's, it's not, it's not enough. Like there's career goals that are differing. Like unless he was, it's the always going to be something, something yeah. unless he's like, I'm moving to Afghanistan next week. Like it doesn't matter. I just like people try to find things to not do something. Also, let's say it doesn't work out. Who cares? You know, what's the worst that's going to happen? 
That's what she's he saying. Kills you. Uh, that's what she, she's saying. <laughs> Yolo, like, if they didn't live next to each right, other, that right. is like a little bit of a concern. I, I, why not? If if you're feeling it, I'm going back and forth. No, don't do it. <laughs> you know your gut, I'm drawing a hard line. Your gut instinct was don't shit where you. Unless eat. you think you're gonna be the one breaking up with. Them. That's right. Start thinking about when you're gonna break up with them before you even start dating. I feel like a lot of these questions so far we've gone back and forth. I'm like, but it could be this. Oh, that's tough. Well, and that's why we give you right, I'm saying no. Advice. I'm saying no. No. All right, what are you saying? I'm saying um, friends with benefits, you know? Just fuck. Enjoy. You might as well date them then. You might as <laughs> well date them. Enjoy your time. I just think that there's a lot of pressure being put on the And then long it doesn't term. work. And then he's a fucking serial killer. And he might be like stalking you. Oh, no, don't do it. Don't do it. You have to get a restraining order. I'm just going to the furthest depths of how bad this could be. Mm. And then it's true. If like you guys do break up, then you'd then you'd be so close to seeing like who his new partner is once he starts dating again. Can you emotionally handle that? Right. Next question. My sister is getting. I feel like I kind of want to get a shirt that just says "Next Question." You know? Or like when we get older, somebody wrote drink every time they say now that we're older or when we get older <laughs> now that we're older now that we're older and wiser we are make a drinking game out of it i think about my 20 year old self i was so stupid trash cans <laughs> not even just that i just think inexperienced like i had blind confidence of the world i was talking to your cousin today Which too is not a bad thing but and i'm just like teach his own but for me personally like i'm glad i'm like older having a kid because I just feel like I was too immature to have a kid anytime earlier. Just like I've experienced everything. We saw that one TikTok video that makes sense. Like I don't have any FOMO. At right. All. People going to concerts, going on trips, like, I'm like doing anything. we've done it all. No, thank you. Yeah. We've done it all. I'm like, cool. I'm good. And I think too, we'll get to a place in life where we feel comfortable traveling with a kid, but that is so true. I'm so, I feel like the timing worked out for us yeah. and to each their own. Like you could definitely have, kids young oh, for sure. and be successful but for us i'm so glad that we waited until this time because we did we were selfish for a really long time right. and just did all the things that we wanted to do and now we could just like slow down and focus on the little things and be excited to be like oh my god alex I, saying slow down is like such a lie if anything alex is gonna make me do more oh like go to the park <laughs> no just like more work i just feel like <laughs> yeah having a kid is gonna be more work no time. no but like, <laughs> like we're going to be like, instead of one episode, we're going to do two episodes a week. No, <laughs> unless, unless you guys want that. No, no. <laughs> All right. Next question. My sister is getting married in a year. For religious reasons, my husband and I will not be attending her reception. For context, part of the religious reasoning includes drinking. My sister is not religious, and I know for a fact that she is going to be fuming and very angry with us for a long time, to say the least. She doesn't understand and chooses not to understand our reasons for not attending. We will be a part of every other function for her wedding, including the actual ceremony. The only event we will not be attending is a reception. What should I do? I know you're going to say communication, but she's not going to understand because my mom will also not be attending for religious reasons. And I've already seen how much shit she's giving her for it so far. I know you're also going to say to not worry about it, that society puts so much pressure and standards on weddings that we should just move on and be okay with it and her response. Even though I'll be attending everything else, I know she's going to look past that and not care simply because we're not attending the reception. I'm looking for some advice regarding how I could deal with the situation with her and what your perspective is. At first, I was going to say compromise and go to the ceremony, but you're doing that. But the other part, like, for religious reasons, I know religious, like some people don't drink. That's fine. But what does that have to do <laughs> with you? You don't have to drink. Right. Go to the reception for like 30 minutes and then she'll be dancing her ass off. She won't know. Just like you're her family and her mom's not going religions first over your family. And like, oh, I guess, uh, like, don't, don't <laughs> kill me. I mean, that's not my personal belief. So if that's yours. <laughs> well, the one thing I want to call out is. You wrote in asking us, but you assumed how we were going to respond. So I don't know why you continued the question. She was pretty know right, though. <laughs> about communicating. Well, no, no, no I, but like, I guess. I think, though, that, or my question, I guess, would be, if it's religious 
reasons for you not drinking or being in those situations, are you avoiding every, are you not going to restaurants because people drink there? Oh. Are you not going to events or concerts? Are you avoiding every situation where people are not drinking? Because if if so, then maybe you have a leg to stand on for being like, we we don't go to any environment where there's alcohol. True. Sure. But, but you're going to draw a hard line on your sister's, sister's wedding? wedding? Yeah. You're trying to make a point of something. You're doing something. To, this There's another reason. Or like, what is going to be happening at the wedding that is so crazy that you can't be there to at least support the You're formalities. You're a fucking adult. Don't drink. And just like, like, don't make it about you. Right. And I think your sister, you have every right to decide what you do and what you want to do. But then your sister can respond however the fuck she wants to respond to your action. So you can't be like, how do I deal with her not understanding? Bitch, I don't fucking understand. I, like, I'll, and if you want her to understand, give more context. Because right now, there's no real reason to me, to me, that you can't be there to support her and still That's so annoying. not cross your religious boundaries. But I don't know. I don't know. So, like, what's fucked up is like, I would, res I respect you for your religious beliefs and what you believe in, what you want to do. But like, don't. It just seems like my point is like one sided. Yeah, like you can make that decision, but you can't then be mad at your sister for then having choosing her life and emotion. how she wants to live her life. No, 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 not just that, but having an emotion based off of how you're going to act because you're drawing this boundary, so you can't. You can't control how your sister's going to react. Does she to that. not understand what her sister's feelings towards this? Like, is she not getting that? She like, does she understand? That, like, her sister has a right to be upset that her mother and sister aren't coming to her fucking wedding reception. She thinks it's enough that they're going to the ceremony, and she thinks that her sister should understand their reasoning for not going. Did your sister go to yours? Did your sister go to your whole wedding? True, dude. Fuck that. That's annoying. This is it's not a religious thing that I'm mad at her about. I think it's just a self self-centered, selfish thing. And there's some other underlying thing going on. Like you're proving you're trying to prove a point, or I don't know. I don't like well, it. And that's why I want to know: are you avoiding everything in life that is centered around alcohol? You no, you know they're not. You know <laughs> yeah. she's going to fucking Applebee's. Yeah. And people, somebody just having a drink at the table next they to her. She's not beer storming at out. at Starbucks, exactly. Are you avoiding they, that place they too? They serve beer at Starbucks? I thought they did. Don't they have like wine, chilled wine? Whatever. No way. Really? A lot of places serve alcohol. So that's just did my Did they question. go to Starbucks in that show that you were watching? And did they, something happened there? No, but he did <laughs> have a cafe. Hey. Sean, did you like walk in on that part? Like where, uh, when did no, you No, I walked that? in on you bawling your eyes out. I was I like, oh, this is like a pregnancy it thing. It was sad. <laughs> I was sad. like. I think people who are not pregnant still cried at that show. I do want to talk about all the things that I cried over in the first trimester that were unnecessary. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we'll get to that. I just think that, yeah, you're being kind of um, she inconsiderate knows. So basically here. we're not on your side. No, no. Also because what... You, you didn't you, give enough context for us to even understand. So why would your sister understand? You like, you're like, she wouldn't understand. Well, we don't. So maybe fucking like, explain tell it. us exactly. What is it about drinking that uh, uh, like, I know that people don't drink it for religious reasons, but that's your choice. And so I think you could still support your sister and not consume alcohol or to your point, stay for the first 30 minutes, an hour, eat dinner, go before people get lit. If you don't want to be in that environment, you don't have to stay the whole time. Right. Go for a little bit. I think your sister has every right to be fucking pissed she's, at you and your mom. She's thinking she's like, I'm doing enough. Yeah. You're right. not. I don't know. I don't anyway, want to say anything more. Except that, that uh, you're not really being a great sister. Should we move on to secrets? You know she went to her whole wedding too. That's so fucked up. It doesn't matter what your religion is. If your sister went to your whole wedding and you're not going to go to her whole wedding, that's not that's cool. what I mean. It's like I have very, and I don't know what your religion is, but I have very differing opinions growing up in a very religious household and now me not being super religious, but I have family members who still are. We still respect each other for our different beliefs. We still love each other. We still show up for each other, but we might not in do a line on certain a, things, yeah, a line but on still certain things or do the things that another person would do. But if my 
siblings didn't come to my wedding because of that, I'd be like, you're dead to me. <laughs> like if that was their reasoning, not because someone was dying or they were having a baby, like what, you have to have a really good reason. Oh man, for- people are going to hate us. Oh well, oh well. The but religious, the really religious people are going to come after us after this. I think, but even in Christianity, like Jesus turned water into wine, you could still be around alcohol. In biblically, you just aren't supposed to get drunk. But so I don't know what religious this is. I'm not going to pretend like I know the Bible, so I'm not going to. There uh, are religions though where alcohol is just a no-no in general. But you're still there's there's we're still on planet Earth. You're not in a country. I don't actually know what country you're at, but like there's obviously going to be alcohol involved. I don't know. Either way, I just think that you're grasping at straws to try to find a reason to not go. Okay. Next segment is secrets. Ready? Secrets, secrets, secrets. Tell me a secret. This is a good one um, because I don't know what I would do. I accidentally found out the gender of our baby without my husband there. I had test results sent to my email and without thinking, I opened it without him there and I saw. Later that day, we opened the email together and I pretended to be surprised. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Our daughter is now two years old. Do I ever tell him or do I take it to the grave? Oh, I'll tell him that. It's not a big deal. I definitely would have waited too. Like I wouldn't I would wait till it's not fresh anymore. Especially, exactly. Two years later. It's like any time I... Like Alex not telling me that she wrecked the rim on the tire like for like a year. I hit, a, you know, bump the car. I just wait until like... It's cooled down a little bit and it won't be. I <laughs> you're technically not lying. You no. know, you're just waiting. I'm just waiting until you hit every other tire so that I okay. feel confident to say, oh my God, you're also a shitty driver. <laughs> Next secret. I'm a 20 year, I'm a 24 year old female. My boyfriend, 26, recently admitted to pleasuring himself to female video game characters. I was like, oh, okay, as a teen boy, this seems okay. But he admitted to doing it as an adult and even having done it recently. This is so uncomfortable to me and I'm not even sure how to go about it. I wonder if this is why he plays video games every day and loves it so much. I don't think I'd ever have to compete or be insecure about something like this. Literally never would have crossed my mind. Like you say, don't yuck someone's yum. Don't yuck someone's yum. Sometimes I everyone wanna, likes different things. Sometimes I want to eat my own words because I'm yucking that. Yeah. Do you, are you attracted to video game characters? No, but still. Some of them are hot though that you make. I'm like, is that me? <laughs> I do make all my characters women. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I'm learning things about John. I just don't think it matters. Does it matter? Because you like, you know, if you watch porn, people have different preferences of porn. So I guess like anime, like people white watch anime porn. It only becomes a problem when it affects you. Yeah, I guess. I guess. But I think it's because he's like playing video games. She's probably wondering, like, is he You don't know that though? Aroused while he's playing video games. You don't know are all video games like that? No. Are the characters really that hot? I don't know. Anyway, that's it. Anyways, okay, review time. Review time. No, I want to talk about all the reasons why I cried in the first trimester. One. You're going to say, because I didn't get you off and I got off. I know that's one, and you bawled your eyes out. That is one of them. I'm sorry. (laughs) It doesn't happen all the time. I don't know what to tell you. In that moment, you couldn't have been more inconsiderate to me and my feelings. I mean, hey. And I lost it. I said, today is not the day. Oh, my gosh. That was just like... (laughs) That's what took you over the edge because yeah. what you were already like, <laughs> like emotional, emotional. And then that just like crested it. That was like, that is it. <laughs> Don't talk to me. And then other times, like I, You're Alex, like, I'll keep no, no, going. no, no, no. I was taking the trash. Alex is in the car. I'm like throwing the trash out and I come back to the car and Alex is bawling her eyes out in the car. And, and you were like, you're going to be such a good dad. <laughs> doing just chores. Doing just chores. from you doing just the, the, the bare the minimum. minimum. What you yeah. should be doing. Yeah. And I'm like, look at him go. Uh, yeah. No, it was a, an emotional time. Like what else? Snacks made me cry. I just love snacks. <laughs> what? Like cookies. I feel like we had a lot of cookies. You at were that crying point. when you... Like I just a wanted a cookie. Oh, that makes sense. Everyone has different cravings. I told you about that woman I worked with who craved clay. I wonder she was, if that's like she was scooping in the ground eating clay because I think she had like iron deficiency. Yeah, she I've was heard of people seeking iron. 
craving like detergent or dirt or like chalk. That's Thankfully, wild. I've only craved um, actual food items and nothing specific. Everything I've been eating at all. Yeah. So there's that. Anyway, I'm like perfect now. I'm healed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. She's an angel. Yeah. I don't get mad at John at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Review time, people. Oh, wait. Do we, do we need to talk about what we're over for the week? Yeah. I'm hungry. That's what I'm over. <laughs> Do you have to start it with the over? I'm overly hungry. Perfect. I don't know what I'm over. I'm I'm happy. Fuck over. Whatever. You can say over or not. I'm I'm doing good. Like we're we're efficient, doing work. I feel productive. You know, I'm good right now. Currently, right now, I'm good. Ask me in an hour. I don't know. That's all I got. It's true. Um, my yuck. We'll just. Do a bunch of different things. I'm over how crowded the gym was. The gym was packed today. I can't wait to go to New York and hopefully make our own gym or maybe there's a gym nearby. I don't know. Find something. <sighs> That's the issue with LA though. Someone made a TikTok the other day and it was like, people in LA don't work. It's true. Everyone's out all the time. I think it's because everyone, it's a gig city. So people are either working odd hours Trying or to get work, whatever. it's an off time and yeah. off season. So things are just crowded all the time everywhere. I can't wait to go to a gym. That's we go to e Equinox is the only gym that's close to us. And it is $250. It is crazy expensive. I go every day, so it's worth it. But like New York gyms are like 25 bucks. I, qu I quit Equinox because I said, this is enough. You I love the it. Peloton. I just work out at home now in the quiet of my own home. I lift my I weight. I need to get out of the house. Like that is my only time. I mean, out of the I house. get that. But for me, it's not worth fighting Joe Schmo for a squat rack for him to lift 10 pounds. Like, no, I just, I don't want to. I get it. Cool. Can I read the review now? Sure. Let's go. Review time. Just so funny. <laughs> All right. What? Why'd you say it like Just that? so funny and honest. J Raptor seven, five stars. I've been following Alex and John on Instagram and TikTok because they have some of the funniest couple content around. Everything always seems so relatable. I always see clips of this podcast and social media, but I'm just now catching up a few years after it began. Their podcast is just as entertaining. I love listening to their playful banter. They definitely make you feel like you're having a chat with friends. The topics they cover are super helpful because they're usually relatable to my relationship or someone I know. Don't worry, John. We love the would you rather segment. Keep it up, you two. Here's Here's to many years of continued success. Wow. We haven't said so he, would I think you rather. I think he's still in back. season one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he won't even like come or she won't even like listen to their own review until a long time. <laughs> yeah. Because when was the last time we did would you rather? I don't know rather? how many episodes we have. A lot. What was like would you rather is, man. We used to was do Was it this. last season? No, I think that was the first season. Yeah. So two years ago. Oh, man. Anyways, like guys. Ago. Like, subscribe, email, comment. We love you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. If you have any questions, you could email us at hello at give it to me straight podcast.com. You could go to our show notes or the link in our bio to submit your anonymous questions. And you could find us everywhere on socials at give it to me straight podcast. We will see you next week. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye.